All right, we're working with the coordinate plane. So you can see this actually, the whole picture here is the coordinate plane. And I'm going to draw uh, an arrow here that will point to the origin. The origin exists right in the middle here where these two lines intersect. Now these two lines, we have a word for them. We call them axes. The singular version of it is axis. So we have a y-axis, which goes up and down horizontally. I mean horizontally, vertically. Please don't be confused by that. And the x-axis, this is the one that's horizontal. So the x-axis goes this way. And another vocab term to be familiar with is an ordered pair. We have an ordered pair. For instance, we have the numbers 3, comma, negative 4. What I mean by that is the x-coordinate is 3 here. x always comes first. Just think of the alphabet. And then negative 4 is the y-coordinate. That comes second. So if we were graphing the point 3, negative 4, we would move over three spaces on the x-coordinate because that's x that comes first and then negative four means that we have to move down four spots to right here so I'll give you some more of those just to practice again the order that these all go in is x comma y so if we're looking at point P up here it says negative four comma two we'd move over first on the x-axis negative one negative two negative three negative four and then up 2 because it's a positive 2. So we're going to go up 2, and I'll graph that point right there. And we could even label it P. Point T is 1, 3. We'd move over 1, and then up 1, 2, 3. That's point T. And then point C is negative 3. So we'd move over 1, 2, 3. Now, you can pause the video and want if you want and, and see if um, negative 5, see if that goes up or down. Sure enough, we would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and that right there is where point C is. Point C is right there. Um, one other thing I want to point out, this would be considered quadrant 1. Um, that's where the two positive numbers are, so x is positive and y is positive. This is considered to be quadrant 2. This is quadrant 3, and you can see that both x and y are negative here. And notice I'm using Roman numerals. You should use Roman numerals when you put quadrants. Quadrant 4 would be located right here. All right. Um, one more thing we're going to look at is reflections. So we, it, the directions here say reflect point B across the x-axis. It's important to understand that word, ref, um, the point B, the word reflect just means we're going to flip it over and it's, we're going to flip it over the x-axis. So um, just to highlight the x-axis, of course, that's the horizontal one, so make sure you put it over the horizontal one and not over the vertical one by mistake. So point B is the, the point we're looking at. So here's point B right here. You can see that point B is currently at 5, 1. So we'll write that in. So B is at 5, 1. All we do when we reflect it, we're just going to see how it's one point away from, I call this the fence, uh, this yellow line here. It's one away, so we're going to go one away on the other side. So that's the point that we're going to reflect. And we would call this point, a lot of times you hear the term B prime, which means just B with a tickle mark on it written like this. Um, what I've been doing with, with kids this year is just uh, calling it a, a point D or an arbitrary letter that isn't in the problem. So make sure it's not A or C. Now this point would be not 5 comma 1, but it would still be 5 on the x-axis, but negative 1 since you're going down now. All right. See if you want to pause the video. If you can figure out what um, actually, what there we go. If, if you can figure out what point B would be if you reflected across the y-axis. Pause the video, see if you can figure that out. All right, we've got the y-axis now. So that's this axis right here. And you can see I highlighted it in the, in the term there. And it would be point B, not point C or A, point B. So in that case, we would put point B. It looks like it's... Um, 5 away on the x-axis, so we still want it to be 5 away, but this time it's going to be negative. And let's call this point, I don't know, point D. Point D is at negative 5, comma 1. 
All right, so negative 5 comma 1, that's the point right there. And you can see point B was at positive 5 comma 1. If you remember from the one we just did, that was point B where it originally was. The only thing that changed when we reflected it here was the x coordinate. It became negative instead of positive. And when we did the one before, it was actually the y coordinate that changed. So depending on what axis you reflect over, uh, one point will change and one point will become the opposite point, if that makes sense. So here we reflected across the x-axis, so the x-coordinate stayed the same. On the other problem, we reflected across the y-axis, so the y-coordinate remained 1 in both instances. One other thing we, we might have to do with these problems is find the area of a triangle. So remember the, the formula is a equals base times height, and you would divide that by 2. So I'm going to use a slash mark to show division. Um, the, the base here would be, well, we can count it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And remember, the base and height always meet at the right angle. So the base would be 5, the height would be 3 units. 5 times 3 divided by 2. That, of course, would equal 15. We want to divide that by 2 as well. And remember that this was... Um, there was no units given, so we're going to give it area equals 7.5 units squared.